Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be talking about uh, two different applications by the same company. So this is XSplit Broadcaster over here on the left, and then XSplit Gamecaster over here on the right. And we're going to be trying to compare those two and decipher what the differences between the two apps are, because for the most part they're for the same recording and streaming video content uh, out there on the web. In many cases, it's going to be uh, games that people are going to try to use these for, especially XSplit Gamecaster. Uh, but often, games like Broadcaster as well. Uh, of course, especially with uh, XSplit Broadcaster doing screencasts or any other kind of video recording using your computer, is also a possibility. So um, the idea here is basically the XSplit Broadcaster is kind of a more open-ended, customize-it-yourself way of recording and streaming online. Uh, you can see that you can set up multiple different scenes, you can switch between them, they have transitions, and you can add in many different kinds of sources here, which is probably the main uh, advantage of XSplit Broadcaster, just that it has a lot of power if you know what you're doing. Uh, note things like web page URLs, being able to add in custom sources from uh, things like Twitch alerts so that you can get donations to appear on screen if you're doing Twitch streaming, that's a big deal. And I haven't seen anything like that in uh, XSplit Gamecaster. So XSplit Gamecaster, it's more kind of, uh, you just set it up, you open it up and connect to a few accounts and you'll pretty much be ready to go. So XSplit Gamecaster is kind of like a, uh, Broadcasting for novices kind of tool. Now, um, definitely can be used for professional streaming. I'll show you. Uh, it, it's got an in-game interface, so Xbox Broadcaster doesn't have this. Um, but you can have things like new follower notifications without adding in your own custom source. Uh, and Twitch chat to actually show either just as an overlay for your screen, uh, or we can actually set it up so that it will show while we're recording and stream as well. So that's pretty cool. And having these features is just as simple as hitting control tab and then going over here to like Twitch settings, enable Twitch panel and order the followers subscriber panel. Um, you can also easily share your live stream to places like Twitter and Facebook and enable your webcam right there. And then as long as you're connected to Twitch, you just hit stream and basically you're good to go. Uh, so that's actually pretty cool. Um, it's very easy to set up and um, have, being able to basically type into Twitch chat without having to alt tab into another program or anything like that, that's pretty nice. Um, now, most of that kind of functionality, all the stuff you have here connecting to different social media accounts, uh, or, or rather, um, basically streaming to your different social media accounts and then doing your own notifications. It's certainly very possible while you're with an XSplit broadcaster. Um, now you might need to use like, uh, like kind of have your web browser open in some of these cases. I don't, I, I don't know, maybe they've added, uh, someone's added a plugin to kind of when you go live, just do that same kind of share on all of the media platforms, but I couldn't confirm that. Um, but really, there's nothing you can do in XSplit Gamecaster that you can't really do in XSplit Broadcaster. It's just a matter of going through the settings and getting it set up. So if you want things like uh, on-screen alerts, you're going to need to go down to other for the sources and add in web page URLs, that kind of thing. Manually add in your webcams or Facebook virtual camera, whatever you happen to be using. Uh, mess with your microphone audio settings. Customize your different scenes. So uh, one really nice thing is this BRB graphics overlay in Gamecaster. So you can enable this whenever you are not actively in the game. You're like your alt tab. It's going to automatically switch to this. Uh, you can check to and now audio and you can show your usernames for your different Facebook pages. Now you can do that here too. All you would need to do really is uh, set up a scene to add in a graphic for the background with like custom images or text for like your Facebook, your Twitter, your Twitch, whatever you happen to be using. And then you would just switch between them either using a hotkey or pressing here on the keyboard. The difference is Gamecaster kind of automates that for you. So the things in Gamecaster are easier to set up. They make it more automated, um, which is nice. It's good. It's definitely like a kind of advancement in making technology easier to use for the average person. Um, but the downside is, as far as I know, uh, 
it really is only for gaming. So if you want to stream like your entire desktop or you have some uh, external connections, like um, I guess you could just uh, have, huh. Yeah, I'm thinking about, like, if you wanted to have, like, a, a, a full Canon video camera and just have that as your Twitch stream, which some people do that kind of thing, you wouldn't want to do that in Gamecaster, because for Gamecaster to really work, you gotta have that overlay. You gotta basically have a game launched, and then you stream, or you record to your hard drive. And that's definitely one of the things I think you would definitely want to use uh, XSplit Broadcaster for, because... Xplit Broadcaster doesn't require you to have a game open. It doesn't even require you to have a window open. You just have to add in some input sources, which can be microphones, video cameras, web cameras, uh, your desktop, or game captures. And you just put them into Xplit Broadcaster uh, for you to be able to record and or stream. But Gamecaster is obviously, by the name, focuses strictly on games. So I definitely don't think you would have a good time using Xplit Gamecaster for that. Um, but if you're just looking for like a, a basic setup to stream to Twitch, uh, FPS counter, basically ha being able to have new follower notifications, though according to the XSplit, uh, basically official tutorial on this to have the new follower notifications, apparently you need to be a Twitch partner, which requires you to stream three times a week and have a growing audience. So that might be an issue. Um, you can get around that by doing Twitch alerts and XSplit broadcaster and stuff. Well, yeah, if you just, like, purely want to focus on Twitch, all you care about is subscribers, new followers, you don't need any of that extra overlay stuff, um, you could just use XSplit Gamecaster and get away with it. So this might be a good tool to use if you're just getting started. I believe they have uh, free versions for both XSplit Gamecaster and XSplit Broadcaster. Um, of course, what you're seeing right now is the premium version. Um, but in, in the long run, for kind of serious productions, especially if you're doing uh, more like screencasts rather than just pure gaming, um, then XSplit Broadcaster is a tool you're definitely going to want to get to use. Uh, if you're not using XSplit Broadcaster, of course, the closest alternative would be Open Broadcaster software, which is completely free. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully this gives you a good idea of the differences between XSplit Broadcaster and XSplit Gamecaster. Obviously, you can both use both uh, to stream to Twitch, stream to YouTube, whatever you want to do. Um, and they're both good tools for games. But as far as customization goes, XSplit Broadcaster is going to be uh, more powerful there, allowing you to bring in custom external sources and have multiple scenes set up. Um, whereas if you just want to pick up and go where you just launch a game while you have it open and then you can just control tab and stream, XSplit Gamecaster is definitely going to get you up and running uh, quite a bit faster. So uh, I've been Chris. Hopefully this gives you a good overview of the two applications as of 2017. Uh, I do hope that with XSplit Gamecaster uh, in the future, they do go ahead and add some uh, ability to add in Twitch alerts because that's I, I don't see anything about that there, either in the interface or on the, uh, the actual manual for it, which is unfortunate. But uh, for this video, that's going to be it. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future video content. So until then.